All right, folks, hello and welcome to this video lesson on section 2.1, Relations and Functions. All of this material should be summarized and copied down into your notebook for further reference and study. So in class, we began the study of relations and functions by defining a relation as a set of ordered pairs, where each pair contains an input and output. Now, these basic definitions are the groundwork for the rest of this section, so please copy them down now if you have not already. You can pause the video if you need some extra time. The domain is the set of inputs that produce a meaningful result. Uh, I like to just think of it as the possible x values. That's probably the quickest way to remember it. Certain x values will be possible and certain will not be possible, and that's going to be based on what's given in the problem. But before that, I provide a technical definition. Uh, secondly, the range is the set of outputs or possible y values. So normally we're going to be talking about x's and y's. Technically it doesn't have to be x and y, um, but that's usually the most commonly used letters for inputs and outputs. So possible x values, possible y values. And then we get into the definition of a function, uh, which is key throughout this course, and we will review it as we come to different types of functions. This first chapter will just be looking at linear functions, um, but quickly we'll be looking at quadratics, then exponentials, and other types of curves and different functions. So a function is a relation where each input has exactly one output, or each x value is paired with exactly one y value. On the next slide, we're going to look at a bunch of examples uh, to see if we can determine what satisfies this definition and what does not satisfy the definition. The key part is this part here. Each input has exactly one output. You're going to have to ask yourself in each of these cases, is it true that each input has exactly one output, or is it not true? And that's going to determine whether something is a function, yes, or something is not a function, no. Okay, so let's get to the examples. Function or not. Take a moment, copy down these four examples. I used a few different representations. Uh, the first is a rule or an equation, y equals x squared. You should know what that looks like. From Algebra 1, I'll just give a real rough sketch here y, x, and it is a parabola with a vertex at the origin. Let's uh, make sure that hits the origin there. A little messy, but that'll get the job done. Actually, let me clean it up slightly. All right, so I just redrew a nicer looking parabola there. Now, the question is, in this case, does each x value have exactly one y value, or do some x, x values have more than one y value, or not exactly one y value. So if we look at the x's, which remember the x's are the possible x's of the domain, so if you were thinking about what the domain would be, you'd think about, well, what is possible? What are we allowed to put in for x? And that's if nothing else is specified. You just think of what's allowed and what's not allowed. And is there any number that would make this expression undefined or uh, somehow not able to be evaluated? And a quick reflection on that, you could try some negatives, positives, irrational numbers, rational numbers, etc. Uh, and you'll find that any number is allowed. So the domain is actually all real numbers, which I denote with this symbol here. Any real number could be plugged into x. And so then the next question becomes, what are the outputs, or does any of the x values have more than one output? And so just kind of slide your finger along here, and you can see where the different x values will land on different parts of the parabola. And, but each of these x values has its own special part. Uh, perhaps this one uh, over here, let's just say that that's uh, 4 for the x, so that would be 4 comma 4 squared is 16. Okay, notice 4 is only paired with 16. 4 is not going to hit anything else as you go up and down along this vertical line. And since that's the case, and that would be the case with any x value that you chose, this is indeed a function. Every x value has a unique output or exactly one output. So our answer to function or not here for number one is function. And feel free to play the tape back if you need to hear that explanation again. Let's look at example two, which is in set notation. Notice here we only have two ordered pairs. Not that interesting of a relation. So it should be quick and easy to analyze. Just ask yourself, is it true that each input has exactly one output? Let's look at it. Here are the inputs. There's 0, 
it's paired with 1. Remember, this is your x value, your input, and this is your y value. And then here's 2, it's paired with 0. Uh, notice each x value, in this case, there's only two different x values. There's a there's a 0 and there's a 2. So it's really not that difficult to answer the question. Obviously, the 0 only has a 1 as an output. Okay, And obviously, the 2 only has a 0 as an output. So once again, it is the case that each of those inputs has exactly one output. And that's what we want to declare something a function. All right, maybe now you're thinking, okay, well, what would it look like if it wasn't a function? Well, let's say we added a third ordered pair to this set, and we had 0, 3. If that was in the set, this would not be a function because 0 would no longer have exactly one output. It would have the output of 1 and would also have the output of 3. So this is not in our set, so we don't need to worry about it, but that would be something that would make it not a function. Next, we have a mapping diagram and finally a graph. In this mapping diagram, the inputs are lifted on the left side. Okay, this is, this is a bubble or a blob that represents the domain, and then on the right side, the bubble or blob represents the range. Again, these are the possible x values. In this domain, there's only three things possible. There's a 1, a 2, or a 3, and they're assigned various elements in the range or outputs. Ask yourself the question, is it true that each input has exactly one output? And the answer would be no. This is false because of this input here. If you look at the input 2, it's not true that it has one output because it has two possible outputs, namely 10 and 12. And that there is enough to declare this not a function. Lastly, number 4, examining a graph, we're going to apply a similar strategy that we did to number 1 and see are there any x values along this curve that have more than one output. So far I'm drawing lines and it looks like it's only hitting one thing. This one I guess I could extend a little bit until you get to that special portion that I'll highlight in blue. And in that case, whatever this x value is, I don't know what it is, maybe it's 17, maybe it's 5 million, but whatever it is, it's hitting the graph at more than one y value. It's hitting it there, it's hitting it there, and then it's hitting it there again. So this x value, whatever it is, has multiple outputs. And because it has multiple outputs, we can declare this not a function. Because in a function, each input must have exactly one output. Uh, the reason I'm, I'm taking my time on this is because it's really important to get a clear idea of what this definition means and what it doesn't mean. It, it doesn't mean that there can't be two y values that are the same if the x's are different. So just look back at number 1. Say we have 4, 16. Say we're looking over here uh, where I drew the arrow. And the, say that was negative 4, 16. Different ordered pair. Notice the y values are the same. Um, but that's okay because the x values are different. The x value still has exactly one output. 4 is only paired with 16. Negative 4 is only paired with 16. Negative 4 is not paired with 14 or 15 or something else. And that's the idea of a function. You might have noticed that I'm drawing these vertical lines. Uh, that strategy is known as the vertical line test. And if a vertical line hits the graph at more than one point, you know that that is not a function because that some x value will have more than one output. Okay, Or some input would have more than one output. So that's a function. Let's look at a couple more terms. Next up is function notation. I'm going to be brief here. We'll use this throughout the course. You were introduced to it in Algebra 1. Basically, a function will be given a letter name, such as f, g, or h, probably the most common ones. And then we'll write this symbol here, f of x. So notice this is read f of x. And in other words, uh, the name of the function, f of x, uh, will then be followed by a rule or an equation. So the f of x is a fancy way of representing the output. It means the output of the function f when you substitute x into the rule, or the output of x, I'm sorry, the output of f, the output of f when x is the input. That's what that means. It's really just a fancy way of writing y or the output, but as an example, you might see something like f of x equals 3x minus 19. 
That would be a linear function. Uh, this side is the rule. X would be the input. It's also written here, the input. But when you see this whole thing, f of x, it represents the output. Okay, so a couple other things. I know it gets a little sloppy there, but when you're looking at something like f of 1, uh, that refers to the output when x is 1. If you're looking at something like f of 0, that refers to the output when you substitute 0. So that's just some notation to get under your belt, and we'll look at that more as we look at different examples. Lastly, some terms about functions that can be described as discrete or continuous. This is a notion that comes up in calculus and pre-calculus quite a bit, um, but we'll touch on it as well. A function is discrete if its graph consists of separate points. So if I had an xy graph like this, and I were to make a, uh, a relation that was described by these points here, notice there's no continuousness. It doesn't continue smoothly. It's just a bunch of separate points. Uh, it does pass the vertical line test because no vertical line is going through more than one point, uh, but this would be called a discrete function because of the fact that it's made up of separate points. Next we have a continuous function where the graph is unbroken. Okay, that's your typical curve. It could be a parabola like we saw and notice every x value is hit, there's no separations in between, and so we would call this a continuous function because it's unbroken. When you get to pre-calc and calculus, you will define these terms more technically. Okay, there's a little bit more to discrete and continuous than I've defined up here, but these are good working definitions so that you can look at something and just tell me, is it discrete, is it continuous, and you can identify that in a word brawl. That's what we've done so far. In section 2.1, we've defined functions the important part is ask yourself, is it true that each input has exactly one output? Second, we decided how to tell if a function is a function or not, a relation is a function or not. And the key there was the vertical line test. Does any input have more than one output? Next, we looked at function notation, namely f of x, which is written like this. It does not mean f times x. And how to tell if something is an input or an output there. And finally, we looked at the definitions of discrete and continuous functions, which are two types. Thanks for watching this video lesson. As you're watching, if you feel that the videos are either too slow or too fast, you can change the speed on YouTube. So if this is very easy for you, you might want to go up to 1.5 speed or 2.0 speed next time you watch. Thanks, and have a good day.